Hi folks, we use a differential screw when we hold down our Tormach fixture plates when we machine them. And it's really critical that the screw is recessed deep enough. Let's make a custom metrology tool. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. It's just so funny because we have these dial indicators around the shop and I always use them in their traditional means, but why not modify one? Why not take one and build a custom fixture for it? And the idea here is we can drop it into uh, the hole that holds the differential screw. And if we look at it from the top orientation, we'll machine these three cutouts just to make it easy to ensure we've got the right uh, or correct alignment. And then the trick was I didn't want the tip of the dial indicator plunger uh, to read differently based on whether it's in a screw or a hex hole. So what I did was went on to MSC and I found a $4.66, 448 flat drop indicator contact point, a uh, long fancy word of saying a flat thing. I thought about making one, but $4.66, boy, can't argue with that. And so we replaced the end of the dial indicator with that and we modeled up uh, this tool in Fusion 360. Let's go machine it. Facing operation, 2,500 RPMs, 60 inches a minute. This is Delrin, folks, cut beautifully. Really a nice material to work with. Quick spot, drill, this will be the clearance hole for the stem of the dial indicator. We're doing a pre-bore drill, 0.358 inches, which I believe is a letter T drill. 2100 RPMs, which is 200 surface feet, 5 thou per rev, or about 10 inches a minute. We're pecking every 0.15, mostly to break the chips and give us a little bit of a cleaner hole. We then come in with our standard tool 31, quarter inch, four flute end mill with a boring operation. Max spindle speed, one thou per tooth. And I'm doing a 0.1 inch pitch. Take a look at that tool, but it walks its way down. Again, opening up that hole a little bit. We can do a cleanup pass, the very bottom. We're finishing passes of only five thousandths of an inch. Again, we wanna walk this in to have a really good fit to the shank of the indicator. Next up, doing a 2D adaptive with a 3 8 inch end mill. Still going max RPM. Plastics you can generally run at a pretty high surface footage. 2 thou feed per tooth or 30 inches a minute. The trick here is getting the cam to only generate the toolpath on the front three corners where we want. If I had just created a 2D contour, I would probably get a toolpath like this that would have the three notches, but also a lot more toolpath. Right click, edit, under your second tab, geometry. I'm gonna pick a custom stock selection. I don't have that choice right here though. What I want is effectively what the stock is. So I actually went in on the CAD side of Fusion, modeled up my stock, and that gives me, turn off the part, a profile I can pick, which is representative of what the stock actually looks like. Hide that again, click OK. And now it's going to redo that toolpath, again, only focused on uh, those three areas here. The area back here is actually because the stock actually has that little cutout and I didn't model it that way, which I should have. One of the things I think is so cool about this video is this material is about 10 years old. It was some of the first material I ever bought when I was living in New York City. I was trying to learn uh, how to run CNC machines. I had my little tag and I bought some Delrin drops off of eBay and I've cut a few of them, but really I've just moved them around every time I've moved shops and they were laying there and I thought they were perfect. Uh, for this indicator holder. Uh, it was just kind of one of those things that made me smile and think how far we've come and, and how awesome it is to keep doing uh, what we're doing and, and making parts. Uh, quick chamfer, walking around just an edge break. This Delrin can actually be pretty darn sharp and I don't like hand deburring it. Uh, it's easy to really gouge it out. Folks, I love this interpolated hole. Listen to that pop. Awesome. Reindicate on the bottom side, we're gonna deck off the hat, or what do they call it, top hat or mushroom cap, 
of this guy. Again, just super flying it down. Be careful if you use a super fly. If you've got too much unsupported material from underneath, it can tear off. Here, it's mostly supported with the exception of the three little groove areas. So we were okay. Clean out the machine a little and a final chamfer. Coming in the side for a spot drill and then we will tap it offline here to give us a set screw that'll hold the dial indicator in place. Quick quarter 20 with the flex arm looking to see you as I've, when I've gone through my hole. And we should be done. Let's go try it out. Sliding it in. The nice thing too, because that contact tip unscrews, it allows me to keep the holes pretty tight and snug and then screw it on and boom. Now, let's go make a custom face. We used Inkscape really quick to make a little vector graphic of the SMW logo and printed it on this cardstock. It's actually one of the training certificates for our hands-on CNC training classes. Cut it out and the idea here is a go, no-go gauge. And then believe it or not, you can take apart an indicator. Uh, we're using a pretty inexpensive one, uh, mostly because this is a pretty rough gauge. We don't need hyper precision of one thousandth of an inch. And I wasn't sure how much risk we may do to damaging it, but it works pretty well. So you pop the bezel off. You can take it off by hand, but it works a little better to have it secured and then just give it a little whack. After you get the bezel off, we've got to remove the two needles. Now, if you don't want to take the needles off, you could probably slide the outer ring underneath it and then just lay the center piece, cut it in half over top. But we were able to pull them off and put them back on here. Without replacing the cover, I don't think this works. To me, it's gotta be a lean tool. It's gotta be so obvious how to use it uh, in terms of being a go, no-go gauge. And with the numbers, there's some confusion. Well, what am I reading? That's what I love about this design. Anybody can walk up to this tool and immediately see that when both hands are in the green rage, we're allowed to run the part. It works. And now we've got to calibrate it. So get out your gauge block set. We're gonna set up the high and low range, which is 0.4 inches and 0.45 inches. So what we'll do is we'll set it down on the 0.4 inch section, rotate the bezel until it's on the low end, and then we'll check it. It should be at the high end of the travel range when we set it on the 0.45 inch. And we're good to go, folks. It works. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Wednesday.